The content gods have spoken. Yes. Eric Wall and what's the other dude's name? Peter Mc, McDickface? Something like that. Something crazy. Something weird. Peter, Mc, Peter McCordick? Can't remember. All right, let's get into this. I heard my name was mentioned. Wow. Let's get into this, man. I can't wait. Eric Wall. Look at this fucker. <laughs> Peter, you put on some weight, man. You're looking stressed. You should cut that. Peter McCormack, how are you? Feeling swell, thank you. Did you ever think you would end up in Bedford? I've been expecting to end up here. Talk about that. In up, in up generation. Old. And now. I think I've got Richard Hart. All right, podcast. let's get to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Hex. <laughs> Yeah, that's, the thing, that's the only thing ever going on. All the stuff that Trevon James talks about, it's the only stuff ever going on. I don't get it. Let's just go ahead straight to that. What Bitcoin did, not a fucking thing. Just stayed in the one spot for the past five years. One price. It's either 20,000 or it's 30,000. What hex? I heard it's a scam. I'm not sure. Richard Hart seems like a good guy. He seems like he's got great taste in fashion. Yeah, why British people seems always got those two front teeth that's longer than all the other teeth? They always have that. Their teeth are okay, their two front teeth are always longer than all the in others. In chapter twenty-seven of this book, it outlines the steps that you undertake in order to form a cult, and it includes many particular things that are heavily integrated with exactly how hex operates so for now, example what's, here's what's going to be tricky for this is i'm i'm kind of like i wouldn't say a reformed hexican <laughs> but i'm just really not feeling you know the games were great but post chain and like i'm kind of over it um so it's going to be hard for me to like really defend like i want to defend hex and Richard Hart, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, y'all niggas are right. It's played. Next. Well, in the in the 48 Laws of Attraction, there's sort of a, a, a guy that talks about, well, you, you should require sacrifices from your community. And that's like a perfect mirroring to what Richard is doing with this pulse chain. You know, oh, because they have the sacrifice. Yeah, they have sacrifice faces for Pulse Chain, for Pulse X. Uh, actually, if you, if but you read I the thing. What I do find funny, man, is the first thing. Like, it didn't even take five minutes, really. The first thing is X and Richard Hart. That's kind of funny. That says a lot, man. Nothing else is going on. It's almost letter by letter. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you read the chapter, it's like, it's actually textbook what he's doing. And he, he has tweeted the name of this book. He says, I've read five books in my life or something like that. And these are the ones that I highly recommend. I want to know what all five are. Some of them is like, um, uh, what's his name? Yuval, the, the Sapiens, the okay. Sapiens book. And then another one is the 48 Laws of Attraction. Mm -hmm. I think that's the name of the book anyway. Okay. And this one is just how to create a cult. And so are you saying, hold on. Are you saying Hex is a cult? I'm saying that he, this is one of the Come few on, books man. that- Yes, it's obviously a cult. And they, obviously it's a cult because none of them will admit that they're in a cult. And that's like the first thing is you won't admit that you're in a cult. If you're in a cult. Hexkins are in a cult, man. They are like, I never, I've actually never seen anything like this where people can continue to get strung along, strung along, strung along, and they just keep on going with it. like. And I'm always like, man, at what point are they going to be like, all right, man, is this a scam? But none of the main Hex characters ever question it. It's like, come on, yo. It's taking this long. You gave this much. I don't want to say you gave him a billion dollars because a lot of that was Hex, which you can't get a billion. So we'll say we'll say 200 to 400 million. <laughs> gave him about 200 to 400 million. And he can't even produce a advanced layer one. In a year or two, this is getting sketchy, man.
at some point you got to be like, all right, yo, this, this is, this is a scam. <laughs> like, come on, bro. That Richards has read uh -huh. and he has incorporated every element of a specific chapter in that book that mirrors exactly what he's doing with hacks. What are the other parts of that chapter? I can't bring it up for like from the top, from the top of my head. Um, Danny, can you find chapter 27 of the 48 laws of attraction? I mean, you're saying this might be a cult. I mean, this thing is, is so corny. <laughs> like you saying something like he try to say that like it's so profound. Like we've been saying that shit for the past five years. <laughs> of course, it's a cult, man. Ain't no even a question about that. It is a cult. It is a cult. Like, duh. Have you done any research into whether all the hexagons are real people or bots or what? Uh, pretty, they, I'm pretty sure they are real people. I mean, many of them have YouTube stream. Like, yeah, many like, of them man, are shut streamers. the hell up. Like, do you do any? Did you look at, like, at all, all this shit you're talking, did you look at it at all? Like, have you even decided to go look around and do some research since you're sitting here with the platform? Just at least go look and see first before you just start looking stupid. Come on, man. These motherfuckers, crypto is clowns, man. That's why I'm in the channel. I actually put the channel link in the description, actually. So you guys go check it out. You want to see about entertainment, politics, race. That's a big one. I'm talking a lot about race. Links in the description for that. Maybe, but I might just keep continuing to keep it a secret because it's like, I don't really care. All right, back to this guy. I've interacted with them in DMs, a bunch of them. They've invited me yeah, to... Crypto dudes, they're corny, man. These guys are nerds and they're lame, yo. I, I, I can't be associated in this industry anymore. It's lame you know, events and parties. And they show me pictures of when they're hunting in the forest. And so like, hey, Eric, I'm, I'm, because they consider my, they consider me their friend at this point. We've, we've been hating on each other for such a long time that it's sort of turned into this thing. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you are a person that I know pretty well. And you seem to understand some things in the crypto space. I, I want to sort of be your friend. And can you help me understand things that I don't understand in crypto? So I'll keep your enemies closer. Chapter 27 is play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. Mm. And it provides examples from history of leaders who have used this tactic to gain power and control over their followers. Did you just ask ChatGPT to find the answer for you? I just said what's That's in fucking great. I mean, that's really cool. Um, it's so this, slow, this is... like literally slow. Like, wow, ChatGPT, that's, you actually did that. That's wow, it does that? Come on, bro, catch up. One of the things that... You know, I've tweeted a lot, a lot about yeah. everything about Hex, but this is the one thing that I've sort of kept. This is like my mag magnum opus of Your destroying Richard. Thread. Th this is the the one thing that, you know, if I actually pull out the information from that chapter, it would it would just expose the whole shtick, the whole scheme in such a way that I'm, uh, you know, I'm sort of hesitant. Like, do I want to, because this would be the end. Well, do you, do you have a duty to the world to do that? Do you feel a responsibility to, to protect people from this? Because as a journalist, I would say you do so. Uh, I'm wondering if it will backfire. In what way? More attention to him or I'm, I think negative I'm, for you? I, from the last couple of months, it's looking like he's already collapsing the whole thing on his own. Okay, can you ask ChatGPT about Richard Hart? Say, how did Richard Hart create the Hex cult? I don't know if it has data that old. Oh man, that's a mm. stupid question. The it has until September 2021. It says he's a controversial figure in cryptocurrency. Um, no, it doesn't really say anything. Offered large rewards to early adopters. Creating a sense of community, exactly what you said. Right, that's cool. a dumb question to ask ChatGPT. It's not gonna give you a good answer. That's why it, it seems so like, obvious bro, to me. I'm smarter than this fucker, man. And this thing is like, like thinks he's so like, come, this, me, me, nigga, Trevon James is smarter than this fucker, bro. It's incredible. From the outside. Uh, that's that's ChatGPT with Richard. It's like my grand, something my 
granddad would ask me to tell me to do. Shit. Interestingly, the last sentence is, ultimately, whether or not Hex can be considered a cult is a matter of debate. Mm -hmm. Even ChatGPT knows. We didn't ask a cult, did we? No, I just said, oh yeah, no, no, I did. I did. <laughs> I fed it that. <laughs> um, so, okay. Do we know how much money he's made from it? Do we have ideas? Um... Do we think it's millions, it's, tens, or hundreds? Yeah, it's it's hard to tell from because of the fact that when you have an ICO running, you can recycle funds yeah. in and out. But uh, from the Pulse Chain sacrifice and the Pulse X sacrifice, for those particular wallets, you can actually look on Etherscan like how much money are in those wallets right now, and. Uh, we're talking about like slightly less than a billion. There are four hundred million dollars in one of them, and another like three hundred million in another one. And then we have to think about well, how much money did he make from the initial one hacks? And are those wallets essentially his, and he owns that? Oh yeah, ETH. oh yeah. So he is now. And some uh, of the, some of them are in stable coins also. So they're actually like stable coins for hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So he's the either worth hundreds of millions or maybe a billionaire. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive, even if it's bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's not. I would say you got it. You can't count the hex in those wallets. I don't count the hex. I haven't looked in a while, but you can't count the hex because he can't even get that. He would, he could if he slowly sold, but I would say it's probably closer to like it's probably closer to like four hundred million. If you add the hex, it's going to be closer to a billion, but it's still a lot. <laughs> can I tell you? And it's impressive. The scam. <laughs> that is it because he really like convinced everybody that it's gonna i'm gonna do it again and i even had this conspiracy that richard hart's behind bitconnect you want to hear the conspiracy about my my, the, my conspiracy of course you do so i was following i was talking to an account that was run by bitconnect i can't remember the, the exact logistics of it but there was a lawyer or something that the BitConnect page and Richard Hart that that only it was two small pages that had that only Richard Hart was like following or something. It was something like that. It was like a little triangle where it's BitConnect, this one person, and then Richard Hart. And I'm like, man, that is exactly what happened with BitConnect. BitConnect collapsed. Well, BitConnect didn't collapse. BitConnect went really, really well. Then there was the second thing. That was like, oh man, I'm going all in on this. BitConnect 2? BitConnect X? Oh, I'm going all in on this. Uh, nope. And it's gone. Can I tell you a little story about Richard Hart? He tried to troll me and it was fucking brilliant what he did. I actually respect this. So when I was trying to buy Bedford Town Football Club, he reached out to them when he heard about it and tried to buy a sponsorship of the stadium and call it the Hex.com Stadium. So if I bought Bedford Town, I would have had to, because I would have been contractually obliged to have my team playing in the Hex.com stadium. It was so funny. So <laughs> when we were in negotiations, the owner told me, he said, have you heard of a Richard Hart? I was like, yeah. Why? He said, well, he's offered us, you know, it was a nominal amount. It was a small amount, to be honest. If he'd have offered more, he would have got it. He said, uh, yeah, he's offered to sponsor the stadium and take the naming rights. So I was like, that's funny. That is funny. That is funny. Um, okay. I think y'all's so problem say is a lot of people in finance is it's like they don't have anything else besides money. So they want to be the best. Like you're just, you're just hating on him because he's got more money than you. That's <laughs> really what it all boils down to. And you kind of got to just stop caring about money because I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? What you going to buy? What you going to buy? You going to buy a stadium and then what? Don't nobody give a fuck. What you going to do? You can't fuck with one girl at a time anyway. Well, you, can the rest of the time, but you only put you have two dicks basically so it's like come on man what you gonna do the girls don't get but so hot like what you gonna do it's kind of it's kind of lame yeah, it's all collapsing so you can't be mad happen. about somebody having more money you just be satisfied with what you got so to him he's that fabulously wealthy yeah i mean at this point i don't think that uh i mean richard has said it himself that you know 
in terms of how much you can upgrade your lifestyle, there's diminishing returns. So he can, he has the best stereo, like he has the best sound, he has the best TV, he has the best things. So how much happier is he gonna, is he gonna become? Bro, what did I just say? You think what I just said? You don't need that, like this. Unless you get to a certain amount, you can't even really. Come from another hundred million. The thing that he cares about is the adoration from the people around him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, one thing I don't really give a fuck about. I don't know. I'm not comparing myself. I don't know. I just I can't help it. But I mean, that's one thing I'm not really. It'd be cool, but I'm not gonna go try that hard, man. <laughs> uh, he thinks that he is a god, and if he's unable to launch these projects that you know he's told everyone that he's trying to make successful. If he can't do that, then his, this entire cult that he's created is going to, it, it was actually close to happening a couple of months ago when the Hex Prize was in the gutter and the project that he had promised would launch years ago was still just causing delays after delays and excuses. Um, that for him is like way more material than losing a hundred million dollars because yeah. it makes him understand that he is not, you know, a God. He can't do the things that he thinks that he can do. So it diminishes him. It makes him feel smaller. So, so it's, 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 his, his, it's becoming irrelevant. It's just an ego thing at this point. I mean, he wants to become someone that is admired and someone that is, um, omni, omnipotent omniscient, knows everything, knows when the peak of the Bitcoin price is, knows when, when the dip is. He wants people to follow him like a cult, because if you get a cult-like following, your powers uh, go beyond uh, what any ordinary person do, even what beyond what a rich person do. A rich person that doesn't have a cult following is, their life is way less interesting than a person who has you know, a, a cult who believes that what they, what that person says is, you know, a, a divine uh, derived from, from something holy. And that's sort of the thing that, that he's had, that there are actual people that think of him as a god. But he must know that those people think of him of that. He's, it's essentially like buying friends. Yeah. It's not that's truly like, yeah. authentically earned respect. It's people who believe that he's going to make yeah they, the only reason that people like like this is what i don't like about hexagons too they act like richard hart is just awesome if it wasn't for him pumping the price of hex you wouldn't give a fuck about richard you wouldn't care about him you don't wouldn't like him as much it's like they only like you because they're waiting on you to pump the price of hex and everybody's acting like oh no it's people no you're waiting on richard hart to buy up all the coins nigga. let's keep it all the way funky Stop acting like that ain't what it is. And he's going to do that shit. I'm sitting here waiting on him too. That's why I don't never, that's why I never was like, oh, I'm about to get out. Oh, I know he's going to take, he's going to take that, the million, them, that billion. What do you think he's going to do with that shit, man? He's going to add, if it ever comes out, he's going to add all that as liquidity to Pulse Chain and Pulse X and Hex. He's going to split it up and use that as the liquidity for the TVL of the network. It's obvious. And therefore, that's like internally, he knows, like, he doesn't have any genuine, authentic respect from anyone with any credibility. I think that there are a lot of hexagons that will respect him almost no matter what at this point. If something bad happens, they will blame it on the SEC, on the interest rates, on, on you know, whatever. But he's already gotten a sizable community that thinks of him as a divine being. Yeah, but it, it's similar how to, a, not the same, but similar to how a lot of people think of somebody like an Adam Beck. But there's some credibility behind why people respect and like Adam Beck. His inventions, his contributions, Ooh. his takes, whether or not you agree. Like, he has authentically earned the respect of a large group of people, I think Richard would know there's no authenticity behind it. He's, he's, tr I think he's Trump-like in some ways, in that uh, if someone criticizes Adam back, it's like water off a duck's back; it just bounces off him. He doesn't care. Anyone who criticizes Richard Hart becomes a mortal enemy for them. Like I, th I don't think I've even spoken about him what, for a couple of years since I last did that video. Yeah, definitely not. On he still like fucking doesn't. He still goes after me. 
it's like two years later. It's like move, like move on, man. But so I, I think there's like it's almost like Trump. You know how that Trump could not take any criticism. It's because they're a fringe community and Rich they need the bigger adversaries view. to sort of give them relevance again. So they're always yeah. trying to rope in. So for example, I left the Hex community. Left it? You were in it? <laughs> <laughs> I got Was that a slip of the tongue? Were you a Hexican? I got sucked in. No, I wasn't a Hexican, but I got sucked into their Clout. psychosis. I was, I was in there. What? I, um, you know, I took a role... You know, I saw this. I saw this. You know, cult. This this movement in complete disarray, and many of them were scared. Many of them were confused, and they were desperately trying to uh, un interpret the word of Richard because their entire financial future depended on what Richard says, and he was speaking in very vague language. And I sort of took the role of explaining what Richard is saying. I guess he's talking about, you know, he was trying to fork Ethereum. And when you're forking Ethereum, this goes into, you know, what's an Aragon client? What's a sync stage? And, 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 and all these complicated things that hexagons don't understand. So I took the role of um, basically trash talking Richard, but at the same time also explaining what were the technical uh difficulties that he, he was facing. And because of that, the Hex community started to rely on me. And some of them started also to see the the points that I've been making all along, that it's much harder to launch a layer two, layer one blockchain than it is to just call, create a smart contract on top of Ethereum, which Hex is. So they started to rely on me and we had some sort of symbiotic relationship where they loved to, uh, hate me and I loved being hated by them. Um, so, But I, I became sort of a part of the Hex community and there was a lot of banter and it just got to the point, you know, where my cryptocurrency friends like Udi and Hasu and other people were like, Eric, you're, you're spending way too much time. Did you oh, have an intervention? I had. I had an intervention. You were in a cult. <laughs> I wasn't in a cult. See, that's a problem too, man. That's one thing that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to let nobody tell me, hey, man, you doing this too much. Your cryptocurrency friends, you mean the people on the screen <laughs> telling you what you can pay attention to and what not? Come on, man. Like, come on, Eric, you better than that. Do what the fuck you want to do. It don't matter. It don't matter. We all die, nigga. It don't matter what we do. It don't matter what you spend your time doing as long as you having a good time. Cult. Well, so I was like, just closely, I was spending a lot of time with the cult because I thought that I was on an anthropological and What, what, you, what mission. should you be doing, Eric? <laughs> Working, doing something you don't like. You obviously like doing it. You like them likes and retweets, man. It's great. But you know what's getting me more likes and retweets now? Zen. Check out zen.network. You mine it with Ethereum. No, I'm playing. Of, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a scribe, uh, a, a narrator. A of mission the, from God. Yeah. I, I was there with the purpose of, you know, someone needs to tell the story of all the madness and insanity that is goes that goes on inside that cult. Because one day there's going to be a movie made of made from that and there were netflix level documentary teams that were actually flying into portugal to allow me to to speak about what's going on there and i thought that i was bringing a much needed color to this in one of the you know this is this is one of the largest financial schemes uh in in financial history this is the one of the longest running you know financial psychosis that has ever happened yeah. sort of in the world and I was the one with the most intel so I th thought of it as my responsibility to sort of just tell the story and keep track of what people are saying and what is going wrong and what what is actually happening because I was the only one that under understood it and I thought that I could do it from an unbiased perspective and I thought that I had a responsibility to bring to the world this story and I spent an insane amount of time doing that. And that's when my friends sort of came and said, Eric, you got to stop with this hex thing. And I'm, and I, and I'm, and I was telling them, look, this film team is coming in two weeks from now. Like there's going to be a documentary and I'm going to be the main antagonist. And I'm going to, they're like, Eric, it's, it's gone too far. You have to step away. 
you have so much potential and there are there are other things that you could focus your energy on. It's like your parents. And so I left. I your unfollowed all the people. I um, stopped engaging with them. I didn't post in their threads. I didn't argue with them anymore. Yeah, that's about where I'm at too. Like, and it's not even because somebody's telling me not to. It's just that I don't really want to be involved with X no more. Like, they're getting corny to me and I'd rather just slide back like Homer Simpson in the mean, just slide back into the cut, you know, and slowly get out. <laughs> stake by stake for the next, hopefully, five years. Well, I was... Uh... Yeah, please, Phil. Go ahead. <laughs> Dump it all. I want more. Ass niggas. Slightly depressed because I had... You know, I had a very big uh, personality in the Hex community. Like I was the, in the, in the world of Hex, there's Richard Hart and then there's Eric Wall. Like those were the, 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 the Christ and the Antichrist. Um, and I enjoyed- on, which one were you? I was the Antichrist. Huh. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I enjoyed that because it just, it got me into places and, 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 and it got me yeah, into I things know that about it until made X. my life more exciting because I would never have, you know, that doesn't happen to me in, in regular life. Like being that big of an antagonist comes with special perks to it. Like what? Well, um, there are people within the Hex community that where their faith is sort of faltering and then they go to the Antichrist and then the Antichrist is now their new god that they start to listen to instead. So you, you had a spin off cult? Yeah, it's so, sort of within like. <laughs> this is fucking mental. <laughs> it was mental, yeah, but it was insanely cult, entertaining man. at the same time. And I thought that when, when this thing eventually collapses, the entire hex cult would eventually just, uh, you know, I could, I could uh, take them. Like I, they would now understand that what Eric has been saying is the the, the truth, and they would adore you. <laughs> it's not necessarily adoration that I was looking for, but I thought that this is a big community that I can now steer for a better purpose, and that a would Eric be Eric Coin, <laughs> vampire. Everybody's vampire attacking Hex, and it's like easy because if you just go to you, it, like. I don't want to say there's because I'm in it, but it's like as it looks now, it's like a high chance that it's just going to fade out to, unless post chain launches. So everybody that was like, I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, they're going to get some cloud off of it when they're finally right. <laughs> I wasn't going to drop a new yeah. cryptocurrency. <laughs> now keep staking. I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually. I, I take it day by day. Well, maybe you know the Erica Simptow. Do you remember that? No. Well, I had I had like um, a female alter ego. I was gonna create. Oh, Erica. Yeah, I was gonna create like. She's kind of hot. She is kind of hot. Um, of so, yeah. So so I mean, I was the things that happened in the hex community was just on a different scale, on a different level, in a, from a completely different universe from anything that I've been used to and I was uh, excited about that. So when I left, I was like, okay, now I'm just regular, non-antichrist Eric, just just regular Eric. And I got a little bit depressed. For a couple of weeks, I was like, you know, I told my partner that I think I'm heading into depression because I, I you know, I left all these hex channels. I just unfold. It was like a big part of my personality that I eliminated and that, the, the, what happened uh, a month after that, almost immediately after that, was that I started to work on my own projects. Like I actually started to work on projects that, um, you know, Bitcoin projects. <laughs> I was actually starting to do the things that I've been, you know, putting off and focusing my time on that. And for no wild parties, no adoration. No, but I got into I got into things like I started I started um, I started two companies um, like passion projects of mine that are going tremendously well. Uh, I got into AI animation, so I was I was making AI animation where I was talking about philosophical things, and they became like the 
um, most watched uh, videos on particular subreddits and I was getting uh, a different kind of message out things that I wanted to say for years uh, and I was I was you know flying out of my bed each morning because I was so excited about the things that I was working on um, but did you miss the hex people no I mean no I, I realized at that point that what my friends had been saying that yeah I mean you're getting some things out of you know being this hex figure but there's so much more that you're missing out on and that was true. So once I stopped with the hex nonsense, there was another world for me uh, that I had been missing out on. And now I'm like, this this year has been like my rebirth year where I can actually focus on things that isn't, you know, being a part of a crazy cult. <laughs> this is, uh, makes me think of Point Break. When I've Keanu, not seen Point Break. You've not seen Point Break? The fuck? Oh man, you gotta see that film where Keanu Reeves goes undercover with the police. Uh, sorry, under cover for the police to uh, infiltrate a gang, and this is like <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, man. Pulse Chain was supposed to be um, what he promised was that he was going to fork Ethereum, but it was going to be faster, and it was going to have proof of stake before Ethereum had it. Yeah. Um, so it was going to launch before, and it was going to have more scalability, and it would have faster blocks and all that. In the end. Uh, they didn't. They weren't able to launch Pulse Chain before Ethereum. Now it's launched after Ethereum. And oh, it so is, it has launched. Oh, sorry. The, there's a test net for it. Does it work? At, uh, barely. Um, <laughs> so the the window up. The, the they tried to get no, into this. No, I just different. remember I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream last night. I asked Jack Levin. Matter of fact, who's at a party? And I asked Jack, I said, yo, did Richard Hart hire you to, to fix Pulse Chain? He was like, yeah. I was like, can I tell? He's like, no, nah, I'm saying I'm not you. Or was it the, I can't remember. Fees in Ethereum were extremely high. That's when they started. Because y'all remember the, Ethereum- the test net, right when, when Jack made X1 test net, the Pulse Chain, the Block Explorer for X1? That's that same day the Block Explorer for Pulse Chain popped up with all the transactions on it the same day. Ethereum fees are low, and now they have this clone of Ethereum, which there isn't really a purpose for anymore. And they've also, instead of making Ethereum better, which was the thing that they were going to do by making blocks faster, uh, now it's just a carbon copy. Like now he says, we don't want to change the fantastic math that the Ethereum people have done because they've already solved it. So now it's just a complete copy paste of Ethereum. But when Ethereum makes upgrades, upgrades, do they have to upgrade the same? How do they, how does that work? Yeah. So this is pretty funny. So when, um, when a couple of months ago he was asked, so yeah, he's probably going to wait till everything is out for you. Withdraw your, your, your pulse tokens when you stake them. And Richard was like, yeah, yeah, I think I think that we've solved that. And then we spoke to his devs a couple of days later, and they're and they're like, no, we're actually just copy pasting Ethereum, so we have to wait for them to make withdrawals possible <laughs> before they're going to be possible in right. our project. And at that point, that's actually when I started to call. Um, you know, I've been very careful with calling Hex a scam. Oh, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just I just I, I I choose that word very you know specifically when I call something a scam. Uh, so I haven't called it a scam. I've called it like a, 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 a transparently slanted game that goes to enrich a, a particular party. But if it's transparent, people know about it. It's not a scam in my opinion. But now when it's like the the promises that he has he had made about Pulse Chain. And then seeing what he's re- delivering in reality and also seeing how little he knows about what he's actually delivering, that's when I'm at the point where, you know, this is actually, like, if this is, if if the way, you know, he said there's going to be tons of bugs in Ethereum. It's going to be unusable. They don't know how to build this. We're going to do Pulse Chain and it's going to be much better. And now he's just copy pasting Ethereum and it's not better at all. It just comes out later and all the upgrades th- that they are getting is downstream from Ethereum. That is, and they raised a billion dollars for this. That is a scam. That is a scam. Um, What's Pulse X? Pulse X is like a Uniswap uh, application that runs on top of Pulse Chain. So the same yeah. way that Ethereum has Uniswap. So that's just an app, one application, also raised a billion dollars. 
A what, separate billion dollars. A separate billion dollars. And is that a separate billion dollars for Richard? For Richard. So he, he probably has multiple billions of dollars. Uh, so, yeah, so actually, so actually, the the, the um, Fuck. he is richer than us. <laughs> the a part of those do donation amounts were done in hex, and okay. he's promised yeah. not to sell that part. But if you actually look at the just the stable coin and the Ethereum parts, if you combine both of them, that it's like a, a billion in total. Uh, but yeah, people sacrificed. <laughs> they sacrificed. Uh, <laughs> 1.8 billion dollars so when you say donations that's like the hex community sacrificing their hex to go into this new pool chain yeah they say that they're ha they're sacrificing their money for uh freedom of speech and that they're not expecting anything in return even so it though passes the howie test or sp supposedly, supposedly passes the howie. yeah but at the same time it, there's a website that says if you the deposit if you sacrifice this amount of money you get these many yeah points. i always was like yo you can't say yo this is a sacrifice you're getting nothing oh and by the way here go your points this is how many points how many pulse points you'll get like come on man it's obvious you're gonna make people expect something when you start doing that you should just not even have no sacrifice balance checker or none of that if you're gonna really have a sacrifice and try and get over into how many Prizes. tokens that you get, Points so you are prices. actually you're actually you are actually getting a, a, an amount of tokens, and and the the value of these tokens are completely dependent on whether or not Richard Hart launches Paul Chain or not. So it, it is a it is a hundred percent obviously yeah a security, and they're even getting subpoenas at this point. You know the funniest yeah, thing I've seen that they're getting subpoenas, and you know all these hex influencers who are like. You should have bought Hex when I did because now I'm like infinitely rich. They are out on Twitter now because they're getting subpoenas and they have ten thousand dollars of legal fines that they have to pay. Um, and they're they're having these threads like, "Could you please donate to me so that I can afford <laughs> this, <laughs> these, broke, these legal man. fees?" And I'm like, "What what are you talking about? I thought that you were yeah. Like do you a, think a, that the Hex them a millionaire, broke, or a billionaire? Uh, because you bought Hex early. Why are you asking publicly on Twitter for a ten thousand dollar donation so you can handle legal fees? And why aren't why isn't Richard scooping in to give you give you some money to handle with the legal fees? So it's just it just delusion like a, a, yeah, they a delusion moment of disillusion of where you realize that actually these hexagon people aren't that like Yo, most and that's, I'm, I, I hope it doesn't end bad because i'm in it <laughs> i got hex but man if it goes bad and these people that ain't diversified they just straight up hex and you ain't diversified it's gonna be sad i mean i don't want to speak harm on anybody but i can see some hexagons Offing themselves if they like the, the amount of faith that they done put into this and how much they done put on the line. Like, in the documentary, dude sold his house for hex, and it was like 50 cent. <laughs> sold his house for hex and 50 cents, put it in the documentary. He sold his house about like two, how much did he? It was like 250,000 hex, bro, or something like that. It wasn't a lot of hex, and the 250,000 hex is like what? It's like twenty thousand dollars or something like that now i don't know close bought hex at the top and now it's down like 80 percent. so many of them are not actually in but the the, the, the genius thing about it is that uh, hex is so inflationary so in order to not get diluted uh, into nothing you have to stake and you have to stake more than the average uh, amount you have to stake your hacks for more than 3,333 days, so you have to stake it, what is it, like eight, eight years? That's the only way that you're not getting diluted. But then you're actually locked up for eight years. And then you're in the situation where all your capital, you, you can't even get, in, get it back until eight years. So the only thing that you can do is just say that Richard is God on earth <laughs> and everyone should listen to him. Because that's the only way that you're yeah. gonna be able to get some fraction of your money out of that thing. For so eight they years. Are, for eight years. So they're, they're <laughs> locked into this, I call it a uh, findom. You know what findom is? Nope. Mm -hmm. Financial dominance. It's a, okay. it's a thing that usually girls do. Yeah. Like sexy girls, they will uh, rope you into, but there are some men that are attracted by the idea that there's a, a hot girl that takes control of their finances and then they're like, 
Um, but hold on, Tinder Swindler was a male. Isn't that a similar scenario? That's a topic yeah, right there. Yeah, but fandom. That I should was, talk about that. he didn't really. He wasn't super transparent about what what the scam was. In the, in the fandom example, the men actually give away their wealth to a girl knowingly, and they want the girl to be like, you know. Um, they want the girl to be in control of their money. It's, it's, it's sort, sort it's of like it's a domination thing. Yeah, it's like a domination thing. It's cool thing. until beat. like, fandom is cool until it's like, until they like start acting like, it's my money. Like, that shit is not, that shit ain't cute. That shit ain't so good. <laughs> DSM. Yeah, that's why it's called Fendom, financial domination. And that is the thing that P the hexagons are doing with Richard Hart, except that it's not a hot girl, it's a, a, a fat guy in a Prada in, 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 in a Prada outfit. Who looks like Axl Rose. He's like, it's like <laughs> he's like a shit Axl Rose. Yes, if you want to get into Fendom, like at least do it with, you know, don't do it with, you know. Like it's Danny, it's, what the hell is going on here? My favorite thing is that Trayvon James. Do you remember? Is it Trayvon, Trayvon James? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Who is that? I never heard Trayvon James. My name is Trayvon. <laughs> Trayvon James. Who's that? Yeah, the BitConnect guy. Yeah, he's you know he's like a big guy in heck. The BitConnect guy. I'm flattered, man. It's honored. As well. Of course he is. <laughs> of course he is. Oh God, you know our YouTube's gonna be full of them now. Good. We're gonna I was just starting to get on his side too. Man, it's always funny how people say, oh, he's in hex. Bro, I made a grip off hex, bro. I probably got more money than him. Cause I actually sell. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't lock for uh, 15, I mean, I, I did a 15 year stake. I actually saved a million hex for 15 years off of a bet. And that shit actually worth a lot now. But yeah, man, I'm getting paid, bro. <laughs> paid, shout out to Richard. I'm gonna restart the Richard Hart fire for the next two years. I wanna go and hang out with him. I just wanna go and have a lunch with him. No cameras, no microphones. I just wanna talk to him. Trevon or Richard Hart? Richard Hart. I actually got stuck in an elevator with Richard Hart not long ago. Well, he's a big guy, so. And the, the elevators in Sweden are uh, like built in the 60s. They are not built for like Americans. So, so we all got stuck. Bro, I can't in get off the of course he is. <laughs> like, bro, all I do is win. It's crazy, man. It's crazy how like this one thing, like I got in everything that I've ever been done in crypto always wins except for BitConnect. Everything else has been like flawless. And every now and then I'll get in something that's like, ah, but when I'm convinced, that shit is, uh, is going up and it's gonna do well. Zen.network, <laughs> check it out. It's the next, it's the next thanks, bro. It's, 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 it's awesome. In an elevator for like 30 but my minutes. Bags. So do you have an actual ongoing dialogue with him? Yeah, well, not not now because um, a couple of months ago I like officially called him a scammer. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, because the way that he's been managing the Pulse Chain project was just you know beyond like it, it was. I was unable to come up with any reason for why this is not a blatant scam at this point when he's taken billions from his community and he's not even you know, up to date with how the development process is going and, you know, compared to what he, what he said it was going to be and what it actually is, it's just a scam. Like you can't say, I'm going to make a better Ethereum. And then you're like, actually, I'm sort of cloning a version of Ethereum. It's just, you know. Uh, is it I, being used at all? It's a test net at the moment. Right. It's, okay. It's, it's, it's a, a test, test net. net. Isn't he living here in the UK? Um, I see a lot of no. photos of him in shops in the UK. Yeah, I, I don't think that he lives in the UK. Oh. And I'm also like, as much as I think that, you know, some of the things that he's doing is, is bad, I am like uh, ideologically against like doxing the locations of people. No, of course. No, no, I'm saying it more that I thought he like, he was quite public about being in the UK. Yeah, no, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I want to see him. I just, I don't want to interview him. You I already was, did, I fucker. I'm, I'm you look like an idiot. By uh, 
these types of individuals. Like I can disagree with them fundamentally, but also see them as entertainment. Like Craig Wright, similar. I, I'm massively intrigued by Craig Wright. Whilst being in a four-year litigation with him, which has been fucking horrendous, I'm still intrigued by the guy. Like I want to sit down and talk to him. I'm, there's so many questions I have. I'm the exact same person. I'm, you know, like a fly um, attracted to Shit. insanity. Because <laughs> I want to understand it's like, it's like in, interesting from an anthropological point of view. You want to dissect this, this, you know. Yeah, what is your motivation? What are you doing? Like, what are you getting from this? Because in some ways I feel some of these characters are more lost. They're not free. They're, they're the exact opposite of free. They're trapped. And I want to know what it, what's really going on inside. Um, anyway, fuck Richard Hart. Um, let's go on to the proper stuff. What do you care about? Right now? Yes. Like on a high level or in crypto, in Bitcoin? Crypto. And bear in mind, I don't give a shit really about crypto, but... Yeah, no, well, in... in yeah, like, talk don't talk about something fucking else. That's what I'm doing. My new channel, check it out. I'll put the link. I might put it. I'll keep on saying that. Maybe it's down there. Maybe it's not. But yeah, man, go do something else. Why are you you're forcing yourself to talk about crypto? You don't even really care about it. Talk about like Bitcoin in particular. Uh, the thing that I Orals. care most about these days is I think that we can create a, a better Bitcoin culture. Okay. I think that, you know, we... One culture? No, just Have another, become? just another one. I mean, I think that we have this uh, laser eye maxi uh, steak eating Bitcoin community, and you know that's fine for them. Let them do that. Like let let them express their adoration for Bitcoin in that way. But what I don't feel currently exists at the moment uh, at the moment is a way for people to be Bitcoiners in a way that doesn't, you know that doesn't really um, fall into the same slot. Like a way to be a Bitcoiner that doesn't have as rigorous or restrict, uh, restrictive um, parameters of what it means to be a Bitcoiner. Uh, I, I want there to be uh, a conference, a Bitcoin conferences, Bitcoin podcasts that are very Bitcoin positive, but where you don't feel like you have to sort of tow a particular party line. There are two. Well, okay, there's a lot there. You've talked about a forum for discussions. You've talked about Blockstream. You've talked about why we have alternative. Uh, uh, Man, I know y'all probably don't care about this, but I'm still watching it. So we're just going to see what he's talking about. Ones. Okay, but there's a lot. And I... I I can't, I can't have one. I can't follow that with one question that covers all of those. Okay, so firstly, in terms of having a forum, you're on that forum right now. Okay, I, there's nobody I won't have as long as they're not too much of a nutter. I left most people on this to talk about it, and we have a broad, uh, uh, we we cover a broad set of subject, broad set of guests. So saying that forum doesn't exist is not true. It exists. Twitter is also that forum. So the forum exists. You can have that discussion. Really if that. if there aren't. If, if there isn't yeah. a big enough cohort for you, if you're saying there isn't... If this shit ain't got about a thousand views, <laughs> what Bitcoin did, you need to change the name. Give that shit to somebody else. A big enough cohort, it's either one or two things, go and build it, or secondly, in a marketplace of ideas, it's not working. Yep, so yep. Let, me, let me respond to that. Okay. So. Yes, I mean, I can say the things that I say. No one's, you know, killing me. But what happened when I started to express these ideas within the Bitcoin ecosystem is that the majority of sort of the Bitcoin, the the incumbent, the the, the diehard Bitcoiners, they did uh, shun me out. Okay. In the sense that, you know, Peter Todd, um, like most of the Bitcoin maximists called me... Uh, Dangerous person, like Peter Peter uh, Todd actually called me potentially dangerous and uh, recommended other people not to listen to my word. And uh, I think you, what you really have here is a, is a marketing problem. 
as a marketer, I think you have a marketing problem of marketing your disagreements or your alternative views on narratives. And um, once you're seen as an enemy on, on the outside, um, you know, perhaps because you've shit coined or you've trolled, your ideas sometimes don't matter. But shit coining should not. Like Jeff was about to say, yo, stop saying shit coining. <laughs> That's the fucking main thing. Y'all keep acting like it ain't no other crypto. Can't never be no other crypto. Come on, man. Shitcoin, just call it a crypto, man. Look. But it, it does it, it, matter. It, no. You have to stop saying that. Because look. It if, matters to them, so therefore you have a marketing problem. Yeah, but it should. it doesn't matter to the... You know, there's this, um, there was in, in, in Miami a couple of years ago, they did a raise of hands. It's like, is there anyone in the audience who owns Bitcoin? It was, people, yeah. People raised hands. And two thirds were about how owned a shitcoin. Yeah. And yeah. they are Bitcoiners. So just because you have shitcoin, that is not an argument for why you should not be able to participate in the Bitcoin debate. You can be a Bitcoiner. And, and the reason, the reason that, the reason that it is, the reason that it is, not the the reason that we have to shitcoin is because Bitcoin gave walkover on drive chains. No, you don't have to shitcoin. The reason you shitcoin is you choose to shitcoin. You don't have to. You choose to. We we are trying to we are trying to um, enable the vision that the Blockstream company had back in 2014. And because Bitcoin chose not to go down that route, we are still... But Bitcoin didn't choose anything. Blockstream chose not to. It's a bit like Amazon started out selling books and now has AWS and every other part of his business. Things change. Businesses have commercial no, pressures. No, it was more than that. It wasn't just Blockstream. It was also the... The, the people who are most instrumental in defining Bitcoin consensus that no longer wanted to see drive chains happen on Bitcoin. And for that reason, we don't have smart contracts on Bitcoin. And now, because of that, this was the primary objective of not only Blockstream, but the entire, like when we used to say that Bitcoin is going to power all of the things that we're going to be able to do with altcoins, now we're not doing it anymore. So there are some other currencies like Ethereum, that are doing that, and you are not an enemy of Bitcoin just because you're trying to do the thing that Bitcoin said it was going to do, just that you're doing it with another currency. Eric, I think even if Bitcoin had done that, all these alternative currencies and layer ones would have existed anyway. Yes, and then it would have been shitcoining. Because mm -hmm. you could, if you could do that on Bitcoin, but you chose to do it with another currency, then you're shitcoining. But yeah. now, if you cannot do it with anything else, uh, if you cannot do it with Bitcoin alone and you choose to do it with another currency because you have to, then you're trying to do the things that we wanted to do with Bitcoin originally. So, but the, the priorities change. There will be reasons people chose not to do this. There is the consensus layer, but you have social consensus. You have the, you have the pathway. All right, just, all right, I'll holler, y'all. Pretty good.